People, deluded, I'm back again. Good morning and I hope you're all doing well and safe as well as you can with obviously what's affecting the world at the moment. Cracking on with Arsenal stuff, let's sit here and speak about some things. I'm going to do this in a different order. The thing I was going to do first, I'm actually now going to do it, well, last, sorry, I'm now going to do it first. Um, Sagnus had something more to say. Now, we saw previously former Arsenal fullback, um, I believe he was here for seven, eight years, he offered some reports and a, and a sort of clap back into what Cesc Fabregas said. For those who don't know what I'm referring to, obviously on Arsenal, but Ars blog, sorry, you saw Cesc Fabregas have an exclusive interview. It's quite a good one. It's insightful with many things, but the bit of relevance he kind of alluded to technic, te from a technical point of view on the football field. Many players, there was only a couple that was at his level. Many weren't mentally. He questioned them as well, not in a bad way, but he did say something along the lines of. You know, it kind of killed him to lose and he didn't kind of get that at the same time with the other players. And obviously, Sagna is going to feel several sort of ways. I don't feel maybe, you know, Sagna wasn't the best technically, technical wise, of course, but that's not him. What I liked about Sagna is even in, a, in today's day and age, it highlights it more. Man, that just do their job. Like, I don't, you see, when I always say scouts do your job, but we must can find the right back and things. I'm referring to Sagna because no disrespect to Sagna. He could cross the ball and he was decent technically, but he wasn't no modern day fullback like we see with Alves. He could get forward and whatnot. But what I liked about him, he was a bloody good defender. He was consistent. He done his job. That's it. We need man like that. Seven million or so. Um, kind of low profile as well. I don't understand why we can't find these sort of players. So I don't think he was alluding to you because I do believe at the time, yeah, you had the Nazaris, the Cessis and Van Persies, but there was a void in technical quality. I do think them technical players together with you, Sagna, you were some of the only players that if we were to even attempt to build a team capable of winning the league, you would be part of it. Sagna, at a point, no one can tell me he wasn't one of the best fullbacks in the league and potentially one of the best fullbacks in the league. And yeah, man, he's obviously going to feel some sort of way because he was part of that team. He's got teammates, you know, and he's just allowed an opinion like everybody else. So he offered his thoughts on that. Um, but in relation to his own move, and I won't say it makes him a hypocrite, but, you know, you can't really, you can criticise Cesc. I'm not defending Cesc by any means. I'm not defending anyone. I'm just talking the thing. But you kind of alluding to the same thing. Um, he said, I got upset. Not when Cesc Fabregas left, because that was quite an obvious move. I mean, we all knew eventually Barcelona. Not when Cesc, um, Samir Nasri, sorry, left. But when Van Persie left, it was like a statement from the club. He left in a way that no one understood, because he was flying. He was a different type of player, an animal on the pitch, a goal-scoring machine. When he left, I understand why Arsenal... I, I wondered why Arsenal didn't try more to keep him. And potentially we did. You know, at one point he looked like he was going to Juventus. He did up pre-season and he went to United. Of course we shouldn't have sold him to United. Of course, you know, he he went to United and he was a success and he won the league and he got a guard of honour. You cannot begrudge Van Persie either. Like, I, listen, I can't, I don't necessarily agree with the moves they've made. Definitely in Cesc's case, how he's done it, allegedly go on strike. But what I am saying is I understand why these guys made moves because similar to now, obviously we're in a slightly healthier position and there isn't much of a need to sell our players on as much. Can't imagine too many of these players, you know, because it felt like we had better recruitment when we had when we had when we were poorer. But um I understand. We stuck by Van Persie for years when he wasn't this top player. We he then became a top player and he realized to himself, yo, Premier League. Yeah, you would have liked him to think he owed us something, but he told us the club is going in a different direction. You can't begrudge him. Silas Ferguson was bullying the league at the time, and you know he needs to be able to look back in his career and have no regrets, which I'm sure, which I'm sure he doesn't. It is what it is. We messed up not either renewing Van Persie's contract or moving him on. Cesc Fabregas, we always knew it was going to happen, and it was for me it was quite sour the way he lost. I um, mean, left, but. He's shown he's got that in him, he, to be fair with you. He showed that to come to Arsenal. He's shown that many occasions, really. I'm just saying I understand. Not going to get into Nasri's, but you know, Naz Nasri didn't do in business where he clearly, you know. And for me, I'm sure he left a week after the Emirates Cup because I remember he was warming up where I was sat at the Emirates and someone said, please stay, Nasri. Um, are you going to stay? He said, yeah, and bust out to City. Of course, he would gas it, but yeah. Um... And and we're going two different places at the time. We didn't. We're not going to have a team able to win the league at the time. So you know, I I can understand why Sagna would say this, but Sagna is no idiot. He's involved in that. He knew you must have known and and questioned where the club collectively is going, especially when you're seeing what other teams are doing. Um, so yeah, and he said um, he wondered why we didn't try more to keep him, even if they had to spend lots of money. Just do it. 
because you have to spend money to get another player and if you want to win something, it's going to take time for that player to adapt. I didn't understand that and Alex Song's moves. The two of them left at the same time and I was reading out in the French press um, that got me really upset. Now, Song, I'm not going to lie. I, listen, I think Song was a decent player, but I, I might get in trouble for this. I think he was vastly overrated. I think his best highlights are, his, are these assists, um, which weren't that much, but they had some good ones. You know, on Ree, I'm sure he set up something. Like, there was another, I don't, was it against Barca? It might not have been, but he done one lovely long range ball. But yeah, man, I think, you know what, with Song, you can't even begrudge Song, but it didn't work out for him. Barcelona come for you. You've got to keep it moving. The club made profit. It is what it is. And speaking of Song, I heard he's in some, not legal issues, but he's battling in relation to his current club, FC Sion, and trying to get his wages and things like that. Hopefully that works out for him. Um, but I get it, because what Sagan is doing, he's seeing players, whether they're players that were good already, players that, you know, people didn't really think were good and they're, they're turning into something. I mean, when you're looking around and you're seeing Nasri, who's a baller and was a baller, Van Persie, I don't need to say anything. Cesc Fabregas, Alex Song, who definitely within his last two years at Arsenal really developed into a player. When you're seeing this and you're seeing it come up away, and obviously I'm sure you could you could throw a couple other players into this mix, you're going to become disheartened and you're going to think about it. And to be fair, I don't begrudge even Sagna for running down this deal and going, I have a lot of bad blood for Sagna because he was probably my favourite player away from them because I was a right back. Really, I don't want to say idolised, but really liked Sagna, man. And... Yeah, man, he mashed up my heart leaving and going to City. I was kind of happy only won the league up there, really, because I'm sure you earned wages there, but it didn't happen. But I can't begrudge you. If Listen, it's like being in a company. If you, yeah, got all the, you got your uni degree, you got your qualifications, you you know, you get qualification on qualifications, you feel like you've done something, you know, you're in a comfy position, but you're looking around at your team and you're looking like, oh, boy, he's happy to just be in this position. He's there. They're not trying to push their, push beyond their boundaries of their field and stuff. You're going to look around and say, you know what, I'm going to take myself to an organisation that can help me realise my ambition and my potential. It's the, it's the same thing. I can't begrudge none of these players, definitely as an Arsenal fan. Even when Alexis went to United, obviously it was a bit of a weird one. Um, but I can't I, I can't begrudge a man for that. If a bad man leaves tomorrow, I can't begrudge a man. In Alexis's case, clearly just the money, clearly, because you had PSG wanted him. Um, we tried to sell him a year before. The wages was a myth. So, yeah, he secured his bag and he sold his soul and that's probably why he's playing so shit right now, Alexis. Really loved you and you broke my heart as well. You made me love players again and you broke my heart again, man. Really, I'm sounding like a, like a woman bust my heart, but this is what football does to you. Um, yeah, man. Not long afterwards, I had an interview with Lekeep. I hope that's how you say it. And they asked me what my future was. And at the time, I hadn't held any talks about my future. I only had one year left before the end of my contract. To me personally, if they wanted me to stay, I would have stayed. But I didn't feel like they did everything to make me stay. I was not expecting them to run after me, but at least expect them to show me some love and make me feel like they wanted me to stay one year before the end of the same contract. I'd kept for six years without asking for a penny more. So what I get by that is you didn't, one, you might have not felt potentially as a valued member. Let's cut the crap. You're not begrudged for, 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 for wanting more money. But like you said, you was here for six years. You rolled your socks up, socks up, you played. And you'd think being a consistent serviceman, one of the best in the league, they would do right by you and potentially extend your deal. Obviously, I'm not agreeing with it, um, people, against Sagna, but the climate was, we were probably gonna, he was probably going to have to keep it moving. Probably should have sold him a year before. And he's allowed to feel aggrieved if that he's been consistent, he's probably rejected interest from everywhere, he's not been a disruptive figure, he's not asked for a penny more, so he probably thought they would give him a, a, a proper deal and whatnot. You did hear we tried to keep him again. He had to go, there's nothing wrong with looking at wages, but if you feel, you know, I, I, I've, I've been this guy for you, you're not even giving me a a little show of good faith with some more money, you're not investing in other players, other players are going, then, you know, you're going to keep it moving and you can't begrudge people for, for keeping it moving, people. You're doing interviews. And he did say, it's not about money like people think or any, or any way of leaving to win trophies. No, I was happy at Arsenal, but my head was gone. I was upset. I remember the fans singing, we want you to stay, but I couldn't stay because I was upset and I couldn't play with my head. OK, so mentally you might not have been in the right place and you wanted to keep it moving from Arsenal to get that clarity and freshness. But let's call a spade a spade. Like the money is a part of this. Don't act like it's not peas. The fans are begging you to stay. The club probably would have bent around to it and gave him, if not necessarily more money, you know, something in terms of years on your, um, an extended years on your contract to tie you over. Probably when 
players should be out of contract and shouldn't have a two year deal and stuff. Let's be honest, man. Like, I get you 100, man. You're, you're, you're allowed to feel your way, but listen, money is a part of it. Let's cut the bullshit. No, man. Money was a part of this. You're not, uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting more peas and wanting a better, um, you know, a better life for yourself and a better sporting projects and things, but call a spade a spade, man. There is money, money and trophies is what it boils down to. <laughs> like, come on. Like, come on. If we were to give Obama 300 bags plus a week, I think he stays, regardless of trophies. If we're ooing and ahhing on top of not being able to match his sporting ambitions, we're going to keep it moving. It is what it is, people. It's like Alexis, rightly or wrongly, if you offered Alexis that 300 bags or plus or... I wouldn't say United's wage, but something very rewarding, considerably more than he had. Do you not think he would have kept, he would have stayed here, um, people? But we didn't. We can't offer a great sporting project like that, and we can't offer the wages. So why am I going to stay? Like I just say, call a spade a spade. Um, he said, um, even my dad talked to me saying, look, you need to clear this up. But I said I was too upset. I wasn't even performing. I remember my dad and my brother came to a game. And they didn't recognise me. And I remember the season you was leaving. It was public knowledge you was leaving for a year, really and truly. I can't. I was even peed off being at the FA Cup final and seeing you celebrate. Like, Sagna like really like you know you go from loving someone to absolutely despising them, man. Like I don't want to say despise Sagna. I've got a lot of love for Sagna, and it's gone. The only player I truly despise. There's a lot, but it's probably Gallas purely because the Gallas of Chelsea, quality defender, versatile defender. The one at Arsenal can't really sit here and list you his, his best games. Ironically, when he scored the winner against Chelsea, but other than that, he caused more he caused more heartache than he than he you know than he did good. He was a disruptive figure within the dressing room. He alienated a lot of his own players. Disgraceful captain should not have worn the number ten shirt. Sulking at Birmingham. Really don't have a lot of time for Gallas. Really despise him. Really, um, and he said. I had some great memories, some difficult moments, sorry. I had some great moments, some difficult moments. I had some good seasons, some average seasons. But during that period, I think I did more positive things than negative things, and I never asked for anything. And that's what I like about you, Sagan. You just rolled your socks up. For me, consistency. That's the one thing and very underrated. You're very consistent and you are competent. Do you know how much I would love to have you in this side right now? No disrespect to Bellerin, but I would love Sagner in this team right now. Imagine Sagner, Tierney, a, a, a decent centre-half, and then Saliba, you know, Leno's 28 or so. Not young for a keeper, but many years ahead of him. What well, He's probably got about five, six, seven years left. Of course, you want to replace Leno before it gets to that, because I'm sure you remember Jens Lehmann when he was winding down and making clangers. But you get it, we've got a defence or some tools to work with um, for the immediate future sort of thing, or we would have. So, Sagna, listen, when it all said and boys, you were a terrific player for me. Not terrific in that, you know, you're the one selling the tickets and stuff, but it was it was a pride to watch someone consistent and competent and a good player. I really like Sagna. Have a lot of vexes about him, but I just feel we need to call a spade a spade personally, people. Um moving away moving away from Sagna people, um rather rather sad news really. Um Arsenal women goalkeeper Pauline Parold Magnin, forgive me for mispronunciations, Pauline, but I can't say that. It's a French name, so I'm probably getting the accents wrong. But in sad news, um, she's contracted corona, or she, um, she's she's since recovered it. But she's, you know, she she had it, and I don't think many people knew that. I didn't know that. We all know about Mikel Arteta's. I didn't know about the player, and it and it does make me realise how did we like did it? Did she get it as a result of being at the Arsenal training ground at an Arsenal game? Did you get it? Because we'll never know directly how corona infiltrated Arsenal when Arteta was it. But if we can try and think about, you know, the one thing I want to see clubs, and I, it's over, it's something that's too smart for me to comprehend, but is there steps we can take, not to pre necessarily prevent it, but to, you know, to decrease these things on top of the obvious washing hands? Because that's what many, that's what we need to do as a society. We need to, listen, I clean, I wash myself, but I'm sure as many people don't wash their hands. Many people love touching up things. Many people love moving, bookie. I'd, I'd hope society starts to think, and especially with the underground on, in London, Clean them fucking chairs, man. Like, clean them. It's taking big, big corona for you lot to get the spray thing out and pull it on social media. Like, have you slapped one of your chairs on the Bakerloo or Piccadilly? Um, buses as well, man. Like, poles as well. Like, again, I don't know how much the cost would be, but cleaning should cleaning of these things should be done once a day, once every two days or whatever happens, people. Um, so it's sad that she contracted it, but she says she was frightened. Like I said, the good thing is she's since recovered. But it would be scary because apparently you've got a 
rate of su of survival with this I saw on BBC. It could be worse. You're seeing a lot of young people die now. Sadly, you're seeing a lot of people in general. But she said, I was still frightened. All the doctors told me that I had contracted COVID-19. I had a lot of symptoms related to this virus. Fever, cold, constant headache, respiratory discomfort, immense, immense fatigue and a loss of taste and smell. I checked a lot of the boxes. My mother told me that I had the symptoms of the coronavirus and I'm starting to really be afraid. The, breathe, the difficulty in breathing followed. There I really freaked out because it was stressful. The stress causes hyperventilation and so on. Um, which is sad people and like I said she's over it and she said she'd like to give a thumbs up to every medical person and person in general that helped her people so it's lovely to hear from that people um, it's lovely it's lovely to hear that now Arsenal was linked with um, I, can't, I can't even say his name he plays he plays for Bromby um, let's just call him Anis um, he's a very decent he's a decent player let me you know what that's that's that's, that's not nice people I'm going to get his full name for you lot before I even carry on because it should be there. Yeah, Anish Ben Silliman. Um, I've not watched too much of him, but over the last week or so, because we was linked with him last month, um, I've been on Wii Scout, I've been looking at footage and stuff. And while I'm not knowledgeable on them people, we're linked with a lot of players. And when I go and look at them, I'm not really taking it back. I'm not here to say this guy is world class in these things. But when I say scouts do their job, scouts do their job and it looks like a case of scouts have done their job, people. I like what I see from this 19-year-old midfielder. He, um, there needs to be more scope for him to develop into a specific role in midfield, but I think he'd be decent as a deep lion. I think he's got good physical qualities. I wouldn't say he's a defensive mid, but he likes to occupy that anchor role. Um, he's not afraid to put a foot in. He's fairly, he's not, I wouldn't say he's both footed, but he's comfortable with both feet, um, distributing it and passing it and things. He's not afraid to try it. I think he's a decent ball character, carrier, sorry. Um, I think he's quite strong. I think he's got good temperament. I like him a lot, people. I think he ticks a lot of the right boxes, people. I really do. And for five million, um, it would it would be decent. Of course, he's lacking experience. I only believe he's made four appearances for Bromby's first team since, you know, bussing into that team. And I think they bought him from another club for a couple thousand. So, you know, a couple thousand, five million pound. <laughs> it's a decent profit, people. <coughs> <coughs> he's decent, but I'm sure you lot will remember. <coughs> I won't remember nothing if I can't speak, people. I'm dying. Um... I'm sure you lot will remember, obviously, John Jensen, who was for, a former Arsenal player. Allegedly, he's a Denmark an, a scout in Denmark for us. So, again, we probably have a couple Danish, I forgot the word, Danish scouts. Um, but if he bust him, then, you know, he deserves his little percentage. I really like him, people, from what I've seen. Will we go for him? I'm not too sure. But he does look like someone a couple of clubs should keep an eye on because I think he can develop into a decent player. Like I said, I'm not here to say a man can be world class and all of these jazz words and stuff, but I just like what I've seen from what I have seen of him, people. But I'm sure you lot all know more about him than me. Um, I've said it before, but I would like two midfielders and can we go and get Shabazz Life for 20 million? Can we go and get Sangreal of Toulouse for 15 or so million considering their league positions and solidify things? Obviously, if we was to bring them in, not naive to believe that Anis is going to come in as well, people. It is what it is in that regards. I'm, all, I'm sure you've all finally seen Kevin Prince Boateng and Aubameyang on Instagram live. There is nothing in it, but there's something in it. He's never going to say, I'm, well, I guess he could, but he's not going to say I'm going to sign a new Arsenal deal. Um, you know, when you hear, yeah, yeah, sure, and I've got a year left, he wasn't trying to, Aubameyang wasn't trying to talk too tough. Of course, my honest opinion is he's leaving, and that, I wouldn't say it firmer confirms it, but it, it doesn't confirm it at all, but I just think he's leaving. Um, but people are undoubtedly going to read into, read into it, people, and Kevin Prince Bolting's quite funny with how he's trying to goad him and whatnot. I'm, also, I'm sure you've all seen Harry Kane's one as well, people. Well, completely different, he's with Redknapp. Um, <laughs> Pardon me. So we'll have to see what happens with Aubameyang. But in relation to Aubameyang becoming on um, um, being named captain, he said, it's something crazy the way it happened. It was a little tricky. I don't know how to say it. It's a big responsibility, but I feel well. I feel good doing it. And I try to do my best. I try to give advice to young players and I feel proud. And I'm, do you know what? I think his future is in the balance. I genuinely think he's gone because if the big boys come for you, the way he's at now, he's got to keep it. Um... But if he wants to, you know, feel important, keep feeling valued, everybody loves him here, comfortable in London, comfortable with teammates, captain and whatnot, 
um, then you know if he's given a good contract, which I believe he she's with full within his rights to demand that three hundred thousand ozels on or more or close to it. Um, you know he'll stay. Um, or if not, if you could go to a Madrid or a Barca, win a couple trophies, and such is life. They'll probably move you on in a year or two. It is what it is in that regards. Um, so we'll see. There's no wrong or right. So of course I hope Aubameyang stays. It was obviously interesting to hear what Sagna had to say, and I do believe this Anin. I mean, guy that plays for Bromby that we've been linked with is a decent player. And if we have been watching him, and I'm sure there's more extensive scouting reports both within Arsenal and in general, I think he's one to either watch with a relation to potentially make, making the move. Hopefully, we can get Shobozlai out. That's probably the number one signing for me. Apparently, Salzburg only want 15 million people. Do I need to spell out to you why that should be of interest to us? Mm, I don't think I do. But on that note, people, it's always a pleasure. Deluded, I'm out.